Um, Asian Americans is also asking, should the UN apportion seats by population? If so, should seats be reserved for the indigenous communities that have no recognized nation? Uh, such, I have no idea how to pronounce this. The Honden, Hondaneswani Confederacy, the Ainu, Amazing, uh, Amazonian tribes, Maori, etc. I, I personally don't think this could be done purport, uh, by population. So, UN, okay, UN, UN seats by population. So basically, China and India will rule the world. China, India, and soon Nigeria will basically rule the world. China, India, Nigeria, and United States. If that's how it works. Uh, obviously, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that, that's a very, I mean, okay. Sh we're just talking hypothetical because obviously this is never going to happen. Like we're just saying, would it, would it have been a better world? Right. I can see how somebody would think that would be a better world because why are countries like, I don't know, UAE <laughs> making, have the same level of say to what, where the, where the globe is going as the country like india right why would india get the same amount of voting power with all these people that and, <laughs> and then you know it's similar to the uae so like it doesn't make any sense like we're talking we're trying to make the planet a better place for everybody so we have to care about the country like the countries that if if we're talking about the vote of the people then the countries who have more people should be able to have more say um that would be true if the United Nations was supposed to be like a demo democracy, like a gov if the United, the reason why that, does, that doesn't apply here is because United Nations is not like the world government. Okay. United Nations is not the world government and it's not supposed to be a government that is elected by the people of the world. That's why it does that solution doesn't make any sense. The United Nations is like, the, look at, listen, Pay attention to the name, United Nations. The whole, it's supposed to be an institution that makes nations um, come and sit at the same table and negotiate with each other instead of going to war with each other, right? So given that it's the role of the United Nations is to be able to create communication between nations and make nations have peace with each other, it makes more sense for each nation to have the same say. Or else they wouldn't be coming at the table, <laughs> right? If each, if if bigger nations had bigger power, then the United Nations would be a place for bigger nations to tell smaller nations to submit, right? And that's not the role of the United Nations. It's supposed to make everybody behave, everybody um, respect each other's borders and uh, you know integrities, and not go to war and basically come um, have agreement. Each nation have an agreement. Like you want, you want everybody to come at the table. So you have to motivate. So you have to give them the the um, like upper, the the reward for coming at the table. Like you know what I mean, the incentive to come at the table. If you're saying that this is a nation where bigger nations have more say than smaller nations, then the countries in the world. So you have to understand the United Nations is an agreement that all the countries in the world have with each other, right? Why would all these smaller nations be incentivized to agree to the agreements of United Nations to even be members of United Nations, where it's just a place where they're told what to do and they have to accept it. So you have to incentivize them to come sit at the table or else United Nations wouldn't even be a thing because everybody who's a member of United Nations has, is willingly, coming there to because they think there's a benefit for them to be there right so the whole thing will collapse if you don't offer that that incentive to them um however your complaint is you know if this is um, if so, some people's complaint is very interesting because um i hear that from um pro-regime iranians because countries like the uae qatar bahrain um you know these were all part of Iran at some point, right? And now they're like, look, the British came and they just took all these and they made all these tiny little countries and right in our doorstep, right next to us. And each one of these now has a vote on its own. Like we have, like we had this great empire and we have now one vote and all these little countries that they basically separated from us 
have their own one vote that as that you know these western powers are using against us even though they were part of iran at some point right you know what i mean like or like you have this big giant empire and you take one small part of it and like oh you have the same vote as this as as the rest of it so they're like this is very unfair to us like you basically created these little um made up nations as a way to basically put us in our place right so that's the claim here okay but that's bull crap i still think like um they should all have the same amount of vote because messing with borders is dangerous okay yes there are examples of borders changing especially if, it, if it's a result of a referendum where it's peaceful and like everything is fine but but given the history of the past hundred years we know that not respecting uh, the borders and not acknowledging the integrity of each country's borders is going to let lead to bloodshed and a lot of misery you have to have a place and by the way a lot of people keep saying oh un is useless un is useless un is not useless at all un has contributed so much these people expect so much from the un um without realizing that without the un we wouldn't have a place for all these nations to come to with each other right the amount of peace that we have had ever since we had un has been unprecedented like we this is like never have we had enjoyed this level of peace throughout human history okay um people are like oh why can't you undo this or like what like with what army okay united nations doesn't have an army it's already a lot better than not having un like this is the only place we, they have, we have the only frame but that's nothing okay that's not the main role of like the that's like insignificant to most countries armies right like if you want serious armies you have like nato you have united states right you have stuff like that but the main role of nato is to provide a framework where countries come and speak with each other okay and even if they fail time and time and again if without that framework you wouldn't even have those negotiations you wouldn't even have that framework you wouldn't even have that set of preset agreements where you could use as a framework to continue discussions from from that right you it would be absolute chaos without united nations right i don't understand if people understand i, I don't know if people understand how valuable having even if it's flawed even though it doesn't always succeed having a framework where you could build upon negotiations on is it's priceless like you most people who complain about un have no idea how much security and peace they enjoy because of it existing yeah wait what, what do you think about having representation for indigenous groups that don't have recognized nation i think that's potentially a very again? interesting idea yeah. the second part of this question yeah. is about representation for indigenous uh communities that don't have their own nation or that's not recognized that sounds like a good idea and if it's not it's because i haven't thought about it but it's just like first glance not thinking about it too much or deeply or not considering its complications it just sounds like a good idea but again i haven't thought about it deeply or yeah, this is something that it. i also like think that i'm very interested by my um main hesitation is the legitimacy of these positions depends upon ethnicity um and that can create a lot of problems over times because in the areas where i grew up um it, this is partially because of how um indian nations have been devised in america over the years which has obviously been a mess and like not very good um but it has reduced people to being kicked out of tribes because of arguments reduced to like arguing over who it is or is not native B arguments over blood quantum basically which becomes very racist and that's not something i report i support so that'd be my like main hesitation is um yeah that kind of uh maintaining that kind of seat over time on the basis of ethnicity okay beep boop i would like to say certain things right now to you that i can't because youtube's community guidelines okay but like your comment is wait do we lose susanna is susanna frozen or is it just me okay i think susanna is frozen okay beep boop is saying you are wrong you you are wrong even in the presence you susanna you're back are you back hey you're back you're you muted 
Hey, okay, okay. I was right, just read checking this, this comment screen. because because I'm gonna I'm gonna lose I can't I'm gonna lose my money. Poop is saying you are wrong. Even in the presence of the United Nations, there have been wars. The re the reason being of the, the the reason that there has been limited large scale conflict is because of modern day weapons. Okay, Bipu. I want you to like think a little bit, okay? Just try to be a little smarter, okay? Just try, okay? Did I say after all these time listening to me, do you think I'm aware of the fact that we have wars? Like, do you did you have I not talked about wars with you here in the live stream for the past? Like, how long have you been here? Did I claim that because of UN presence, there has been zero wars? Who are you talking to? I have discussed wars with you while you're here. Are you like, I just want to understand, like, are you, are you insane? Like, did you, did you hear me say because of the United Nations, wars have been eliminated? Are you here? Like, I really want to understand, like, how people, like, what, what are people responding to sometimes? Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.